Good afternoon. Thank you for watching our Westminster Canterbury Weekly for Thursday, May 27th. Today, I have a couple updates for you. Then our manager of cultural arts, Jessica Corbett, has some very exciting information for you about upcoming programs here in the Cerebellum November Theater. After Jessica, our wellness manager, Melissa Markey, has some, is gonna share some changes that are coming to the fitness and aquatics programming. To finish this out today, Tom Henning has a couple of facilities updates, and then Chaplain David Curtis has our pastoral care segment. So now, real quick for my updates. Some really good news. Um, our, the CMS positivity rate for our area, the composite of Richmond and Henrico has dropped down to the 2.6 level. Um, looks like it's flattening out in that range for the next couple of weeks, but that's good news. That's uh, the lowest it's been in a long time. And because of those lower positivity rates and um, the increasing percentage of the population that's vaccinated, the governor announced recently that Virginia will ease all uh, distancing and capacity restrictions beginning tomorrow, Friday, May 28th. This afternoon, you, know, you will be receiving a memo outlining our next steps as we make additional changes to programs and services that will begin tomorrow. Um, some, let me run you through those changes, um, and then I'll talk about a couple things that we're not quite ready to change. Um, first, the, the changes. Um, residents may now host outside guests in common spaces um, that require uh, a, lim a limited setup. We're not prepared yet to do really big functions with setups and uh, breakdowns and catering, um, but we are, we are ready to begin to allow um, outside guests uh, in lounges and conference rooms and different spaces around campus. Um, please work with the courtesy desk by calling 6094 to reserve an appropriate space for your gathering. Um, also, uh, events, such as things here in the Cerebellum November Theater, may return to full capacity to residents. That includes here in the Cerebellum November Theater, in the Spiritual Center, on the roof terrace, and other spaces. Um, outside guests are not yet permitted in the marketplace or Kathleen's or in the theater or other resident activities. We're not quite ready for that, but we are gonna allow um, residents uh, now at full capacity within our programs and all of our programming space. The fitness center is gonna be open to residents 24 hours a day. Uh, fitness class capacities will increase. Uh, Melissa is gonna share more of those details here in a minute. The salon waiting areas are gonna start to open up uh, on Friday. Um, the grocery store bus will go back to operating at full capacity. Um, and so please continue to sign up for the uh, grocery bus of, um, by calling the tower desk or dialing zero. Also, residents are now free, starting tomorrow, are free to move about through the lower level if you need to. And, and our offices, all of the offices, administration, resident services, finance, sales, um, all of the offices uh, will be open and appointments are no longer required. Um, you're still encouraged to call ahead uh, and set an appointment just so we ensure that we're there when you come, but um, the signage will come down and the offices will be open starting tomorrow. Now a couple of things that will remain the same for now, um, and we still have more changes to come, but for now, clinic appointments uh, will continue to be required by calling extension 6231. Dining services is gonna remain the same for now um, with Kathleen's in the marketplace. Certainly plans uh, to get the Canterbury room open, but we're not quite there yet. Um, and lastly, uh, we're not quite ready yet to begin holding memorial services on campus. Um, we are planning for that, um, but we need to have catering up and we need to allow um, outside guests in big events. So we're not quite there yet. Um, we're going to continue to monitor all the guidance and look at uh, how our programs uh, are being able to be served um, as we bring all this programming back online, making sure the staffing is, is where it needs to be. And we'll look at further steps uh, here in June, so not too far off, hopefully. Also, our masking guidance is going to stay the same, and that means that fully vaccinated independent living residents and your outside visitors may choose whether or not uh, to wear a mask in public. 
uh, and I've seen most, most all the residents now are, are without a mask, and that's, that's great. Um, want to remind everyone that if any of us enter into Parsons Health Center or assisted living or the rehab area, um, including re independent living residents who, who want to visit someone or use uh, or have an appointment in, in rehab, you need to wear a mask. That's a requirement of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Service and Virginia Department of Health. It's not a rule that we have any flexibility with, um, so we're going to ask you to comply with that. All of our employees and our contractors uh, will be, will, we will continue to require all of us uh, to be masked when in the building. Um, employees and contractors who work outside um, can remove their masks outside as long as they're able to maintain their social distance uh, from others, residents, guests, uh, and other staff. Um, if outside staff or contractors are not able to maintain their social distance, then we're gonna ask them to wear their mask uh, during that time. Um, now for some other news uh, from the Mary Morton Parsons Health Center. Um, earlier this month, uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's foundation, so the CDC foundation, announced that frontline nursing home staff nationwide are being honored with the 2021 McKnight Prize for healthcare as, as healthcare outbreak heroes. Um, this award, award encourages and rewards those who served and protected patients from harm related to these health, the healthcare outbreak of COVID-19. Um, we just want to say that we're incredibly grateful to our Parsons, healthcare, Parsons Health Center team that went and continues to go above and beyond uh, to care for everyone and their families in the Parsons Health Center. The honor uh, then, we'll know more about the honor in the, in the coming weeks. It really is, is meant to, in, to include everyone uh, that works in our health center. Nursing assistants, nurses, administrators, recreational therapists, housekeeping, engineering, rehab staff, support staff. Um, to all of us, to everybody who works in Parsons Health Center, uh, we wanna say a special thank you. Um, they really were and, and continue to be amazing uh, in terms of their, their strength and professionalism during some really, really, really hard times over the last year and a half. So uh, the awards are great. Uh, honor and um, we want to extend that to, a, to our healthcare staff. In other good news, um, the Virginia Department of Health state licensure survey team uh, came into the building this week. Um, you might recall Will Blackwell was on the program a couple of weeks ago and shared that we'd had uh, a, a survey that was a federal CMS survey um, which happens every year. Every other year we get a state survey. Normally, the same team does both. Um, this year, two different teams, two different surveys. Um, don't know why exactly, but this year we had a, 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 a separate and distinct state survey. Team came in, did a complete review of a uh, number of records. They reviewed uh, policies, procedures, patient records. They interviewed staff. They interviewed patients, the residents. They interviewed their families. Um, they looked at all the hiring and, and education requirements, all the certification requirements, um, med pass, really top to bottom. Uh, they did a, a, a thorough review and were extremely complimentary of the team. Uh, the, the surveyors had uh, um, a long list of compliments to say about our nursing leadership team and the staff uh, that works in the health center. Um, the survey ended, uh, I guess, yesterday or the day before. Um, I guess it was like yesterday, I think. Um, and they left saying they had no areas of concern and they had, and we, were, we would receive no deficiencies. So that's uh, great news and, and a wonderful pat on the back goes to our healthcare team. They did a, a fabulous job. And then finally, um, for me today as, as an update, in June, as we prepare for the promenade renovation, um, portions of the ellipse, I mentioned this last week, portions of the ellipse are going to get fenced off um, and prepared uh, because that's going to be the lay down for the promenade work. So in about two weeks, you're going to start to see fencing on the promenade and you're going to see the tower lobby area get closed off. Um, on June 2nd, next, what is that, next Tuesday or Wednesday, um, and so I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, um, the team will be here and they're going to be removing the trees at the back of the ellipse. This includes the, the large willow oak 
as well as a couple of uh, the other trees along the back uh, hillside so that they can get equipment and uh, trucks and stuff up onto the ellipse to do the promenade work. Um, and uh, as you, we've said in prior uh, uh, live updates in uh, Westminster Canterbury weeklies, um, we're, we're taking the large willow oak down uh, this year so that we can get the wood from the tree harvested and dried and we can use it uh, within the new facilities once they're built. And so that requires two years of drying time and curing time. So um, it'll be a sad day um, when that happens, but it's, it's necessary. And uh, we're gonna uh, try to do the best we can to honor uh, that tree and, and, and its history here as we uh, use, use that wood in, in the new promenade space when it's finished. Um, also during that period of um, June 2nd through the 4th, the ellipse lot, um, so the, the parking along the back of the ellipse, will be closed during that time uh, to employees and contractors that may be parking back there um, because of the, the um, tree clearing equipment needs to, to have access. So that's all for me today. Next up is Jessica Corbett. Have a fabulous Memorial Day. We'll see you next Thursday. Good afternoon. I am thrilled with John's announcement today of being able to return to full capacity in the theater. I will say that we will still have a small section in the back where seats are distant, so if anyone still needs a little extra space as they come back into our community, that is there for you. Additionally, with the return to full capacity, we will no longer air the program simultaneously on 970. So be sure to pick up a ticket to come in person to support these artists that are eager to have a live audience again. We have some great programs coming up this summer. Beginning on June 3rd, you will see the theater returning to normal programming of evening concerts about once per week, as well as the return of touring artists that are coming all across the country here, right here to our theater. We will be covering the gamut of musical styles in June. We will start off the month with a fabulous family of Southern Gospel singers, the Collinsworth family. We will have the Taters with music of the 60s and 70s. The Chamber Music Society of Central Virginia will bring us a program featuring Vivaldi's Four Seasons. We will have a 50s style rock and roll show and a John Denver tribute show, all in the month of June. Whew. We will have a little something for everyone. As a reminder, tickets can be picked up beginning on, on Fridays for the following week's events. Again, tickets can be picked up on Fridays for the following week's events. So tomorrow morning, be sure to come by the Tower Desk or the Courtyard Business Center for a ticket to see the Collinsworth family next week. You will not want to miss this concert event. It is a family of singers. They'll arrive in two massive tour buses. The mother, group, or the mother in the group even travels with her own piano, and she is phenomenal. It will be a wonderful concert to launch us back to a full theater. Then beginning in July, we will start our monthly outdoor evening concerts in addition to the performances in the theater. We have a great summer ahead thanks to the amazing donors who give to performing arts through the Westminster Canterbury Foundation. All of us can experience these concerts together for free, so I hope to see you back in the theater. Next up is Melissa Markey. Good afternoon. As Jessica said, we're excited to be moving forward with removing many of our restrictions for all of our programming. All the information I'm sharing with you today will also be provided in a memo that will be placed in your box tomorrow. Effective tomorrow, Friday, May 28th, the Jim Marable Fitness Center will open at 7.30 a.m. and the doors will remain open for 24 hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week moving forward. We do ask that you continue to scan your badge at the Fitness Center check-in desk clean your machine and equipment when you are finished, and be mindful of others as you share the space. We also want you to know that beginning on Monday, May 31st, employees will be permitted to use the fitness center during designated timeframes. All of this will be outlined in the memo you receive tomorrow. As always, if you need help getting started in the fitness center or would like an appointment with one of our fitness specialists, please call extension 6669. 
For the aquatic center, starting on June 1st, appointments are no longer required for open swim. Open swim times will be Monday through Friday, 8 to 11.30 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. every day except for Wednesdays. The locker rooms will be back open and available for use starting on June 1st as well. We do ask that you please continue to rinse off before entering the pool or hot tub. If you have any questions regarding the pool, please call extension 6539. A quick reminder that the Aquatic Center will be closed on Monday, May 31st for the holiday. Lastly, capacity will be increased for all of the land and water fitness classes starting next week. Registration is still required and the window for registration opens Mondays at 8 a.m. the week prior to class. We'll be keeping the same schedule and classes for now. We're excited about all of these changes and we look forward to seeing you soon. Next up is Tom Henning. Good afternoon. Uh, we've got a couple of facility updates. First is the power washing for the courtyard apartments will begin next week. This will be starting with in the interior of the right courtyard garden west and this will take three to four weeks depending upon the weather. If you have concerns regarding power washing or if you prefer not to have your balcony power washed or cleaned, please call extension 6241 to make arrangements. Once the courtyard apartment power washing is complete, homes on the green power washing will begin and please stay tuned to the weekly updates and the tales for additional information on the power wash services. We have a new dog park being constructed as we speak right now, and it's located near the east end of the gables. This project will include new fencing, a paver walkway, some benches, new sod and plantings, and we're excited to open this new space to the friends of the dog park in June. Stay tuned again with weekly updates on the timing of this opening. Kathleen Pender will be working with BCLS over the next few weeks to move plant materials from the ellipse to other areas of campus as we prepare for the vibrancy impacts that are happening to the ellipse. The goal is to relocate as much plant material as possible to areas of the property where there might be a need for new plants. Kathleen will also be working with the Buckingham Greenery to relocate interior plantings from the promenade dining room to other areas of campus in preparation for the promenade project. Please remember that Buckingham Greenery maintains the interior plantings throughout our community, so avoid watering these plants. In the tower laundry rooms, we have made some adjustments to the plans based on resident feedback from the first phase of this project. The final details of the renovations are closing up and coming to completion next week, including the delivery of the laundry machines. That's my update. Up next is David Curtis. Good afternoon, I'm David Curtis, one of the staff chaplains here at Westminster Canterbury of Richmond. We are, we are happy that many of you have enjoyed a sermon for every Sunday, sermons that were shown on Sunday afternoon on TV 970 at 4 p.m. We added a sermon for every Sunday during the pandemic when we were not able to be together for worship. Beginning June the 6th, we will resume in-person worship in the sanctuary on Sundays at 4 p.m. This will be televised on TV 970, and I know that many of you are excited and grateful to be able to gather for in-person worship. Moving forward, you may watch a sermon, uh, the sermon online at www.asermonforeverysunday.com. Again, that's a sermon for every Sunday, one word, Dot com. A slight change to the TV schedule. Um, due to some scheduling issues, the Sermon for Every Sunday will not be televised this coming Sunday at 4 p.m., and we do apologize for that change. The June prayer booklets are available. Residents have told us that the prayer booklets have been a source of peace and joy over the past year. They contain a rhythm of prayer for each day, 
And if you have received one previously, one has been placed in your box. If you would like to receive one, please call me at extension 5179. Finally, tomorrow, on Friday, May the 28th at 12 noon, we will gather at the willow oak tree on the ellipse to say a prayer and thanksgiving for this amazing part of God's creation. All are welcome to attend and be present for that. Again, that's tomorrow at 12 noon on the ellipse at the willow oak tree. And today, in place of scripture, I'm offering you a poem in Flanders Fields. It is commonly read during Remembrance Day in the United Kingdom. Remembrance Day falls on November the 11th, which is Veterans Day here in the US. November the 11th marks the end of hostilities for the Great War, or World War I. The poem was written by John McCrae in 1915 for the funeral of a fellow soldier and as we approach Memorial Day, and as we remember those who gave the last full measure of devotion, we honor their sacrifices. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And now a prayer based on the thanksgiving for heroic service from the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O God of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and join us next Thursday for the next installment of Westminster Canterbury Weekly. Thank you. <laughs>